Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game by Paul Morphy and let's check out this exciting chess game once again. Only for fun and this is a chess game from 1850 and in the database we don't know the location, the location is unknown but Paul Morphy was always in New Orleans even at the time when he died, he died at his home in the Morphe Mansion in New Orleans. So we know that this game was probably played in the New Orleans and Paul Morphe's opponent is also unknown chess player, just like the location of this chess game. And at this time Paul Morphe was very young, he was a young chess prodigy. At this time Paul Morphe was a young chess prodigy and he was showing his brilliance. And this is also one of the famous chess games of Paul Morphy, one of the most famous chess games of Paul Morphy. So let's check out what happened in this chess game. So, Paul Morphy, as you can see, is playing without one of his rooks for his weaker opponent. Paul Morphy surrendered one of his rooks and he starts the game with playing e4. He was obsessively playing e4. He always played e4 in his chess games, which is a fine move. After e4, black replied with playing e5, we have e4, e5, and knight to f3, knight to c6, bishop to c4. As always, this is the classic opening of Paul Morphy. This is very usual stuff. If you know the chess games of Paul Morphy, we have knight to f6, knight to g5, attacking the f pawn, defending with pushing the pawn, Morphy captured the pawn, and capturing the pawn, knight takes on d5. But Morphy, when he was playing without one of his rooks, he goes for the knight sacrifice, knight takes on f7, what a move by Paul Morphy, he has no fear. He is playing without one of his rooks, and now he is also sacrificing the knight, and this is forking the queen and the rook. What else, black captured the knight, but then checking the king, also attacking the knight, so black can't retreat with the knight, the knight is pinned. In this position, black played a greedy move. He is not just defending the king, but he is defending the knight. But no, the knight is joining the attack. Knight to c3, extra defense. Knight to d4 doesn't work because of bishop takes on d5, and this is check. So in the real game, Morphy is increasing the pressure. Knight to c3 and defending, going back. Morphy castled. Morphy has the active position, and black's king safety has been compromised, as you can see. This is not an ideal position for black. So black is defending, solidifying the position by black, but then d4 by Morphy. He wants to open the e-file. Black captured the pawn and then checking the king, moving the king. In this position, Paul Morphy captured the knight, capturing back, exchanging and checking the king, king to c7. Blocking with the bishop doesn't work because of bishop to f4 and this position is also unpleasant. Because if something like queen to c7 then rook to e6 and this is looking dangerous for black as you can see. So let's take it back. In the real game after checking the king, moving the king but this time the bishop joins the attack, check. Blocking with the bishop, bishop to d6. What would you do in this position? Morphy played a beautiful aesthetic move. Well, he played queen to c5, check. And where is the king going? We have king to b8. If king to d7, then checkmating the king. Queen takes on d6, check, mate. Black is getting checkmated in one move. Also the rook is occupying the e-file. So we can say that this is getting dangerous for black. Black has to be very careful. But to be honest with you, this is losing by force. This is already game over for black. Morphy checks the king. And this chess game is going to end with the most aesthetic way possible. So after moving the king, what would you do? I am 100% sure that you saw the move. Morphy captured the bishop. Also capturing the bishop with the bishop is also working. Both is fine. But Paul Morphy wanted to checkmate his opponent with the bishop, which is the most aesthetic checkmate, which was the more beautiful looking checkmate. So in this position there is two alternatives for black. One is blocking with the queen, that is game over for black after queen takes queen. The other one, queen takes queen, which has happened in the game, is the second alternative 
and polymorphy captured the queen. Bishop takes on d6. Checkmate. This is what happened in the real chess game. What a beautiful chess game by Paul Murphy. A classic chess game and a must-see chess game by Paul Murphy. During this time, Paul Murphy was living in New Orleans and he was showing his brilliancy after defeating his opponents one after another. People start to talk about Paul Murphy in New Orleans. Paul Murphy was only famous in New Orleans during that time because he was only a kid and people were talking about Paul Murphy saying things like, there is a kid who is playing like a chess god. No one can defeat this kid and his name is Paul Murphy. Paul Murphy had a meteoric rise. And in 1850, Paul Murphy was showing his brilliancy. And in 1857, seven years later, Paul Murphy won the first American Chess Congress. And then you know the rest. A beautiful and aesthetic checkmate by Paul Murphy. And thank you for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye. This is the second chess game of Morphe that I like to demonstrate in this video. And in the chess game, once again, Paul Morphy surrendered his queen's rook, as you can see, which is a huge disadvantage for white. But his opponent was a chess amateur, so against amateur players, a huge talent like Paul Morphy has good chances. And his opponent is not just some random chess player. He was Paul Morphy's uncle, Charles Le Carpentier. And this was also one of the most famous chess games of Paul Morphy. Not just Paul Morphy, but generally speaking, in the history of chess, a very beautiful chess game. But Blake made lots of important mistakes. So let's check out what were those mistakes. As usual, Paul Morphy starts the game with playing e4, e5, developing, d4, challenging the center, exchanging, developing, Bishop to b4 check, blocking, capturing the pawn and Morphy castled, black captured one more pawn, and this is helping Paul Morphy to develop. Note how Paul Morphy's bishops are aiming the king side, they are targeting the king side, which is looking annoying for black, going back with the bishop, which was a bad mistake. Developing the knight should have been considered in this position. And actually black is doing fine. And in this position black is ready to castle. Developing is very important. And this chess game is a perfect example for showing why developing is very important. When black was playing passive moves after passive moves, Morphy was busy with mobilizing his army and developing his pieces one after another. So bishop to f8, going back and defending the pawn. And of course, developing the knight and blocking was the better move. But in this position we have advancing by Paul Morphy and this is still not winning for white because of the rook. Because of the rook handicap. But if there was a rook, this was probably much better for white. So d6, rook d1, lining the rook with the king. We see undeveloped pieces for black. And also we see the king in the middle. This means black is asking for trouble. Against Paul Morphy, this is extremely dangerous. This is positively dangerous. So, we have d takes on e5, capturing the pawn with the knight. And black is happily exchanging the queens. Queen takes on d1. Because white is playing without one of his rooks. And if exchanging the queens, black is simply simplifying the chess game. And he has good chances against white. But there was a surprise. Morphy didn't capture the queen. He checks the king, bishop takes on f7, moving the king. Is this the right time for capturing the queen? And black is also threatening checkmate after capturing the rook. Well, Morphy was a complicated chess player. It is never that simple in Paul Morphy's chess games. He checks the king, checking the king. And black intended to capture the rook because he was a chess amateur. But only then he realized that. This is not just checking the king with the rook, but this is also checking the king with the knight. Double check. 
and Le Carpentier captured the bishop. A deadly mistake. Simply moving the kick is better, but then rook takes queen. Check. The king's safety has been compromised, as you can see. After moving the kick, capturing the rook. And if white would have a rook, if white would not play with the rook odds, this was winning easily for white. But still in this position, black has lots of problems. And this is losing. And white is doing fine, but black is surviving. In the real game, he played a terrible move, a terrible mistake. In this position, after checking the king with the knight, we have king takes on f7, but then Paul Morphy captured the rook. Check. And where is the king going? f6 square has been occupied by the bishop. The knight occupied on g6. The rook is occupying the file. Where is the king going? This is the perfect example, a textbook example of how to attack the king, the uncastled king. Paul Morphy's pieces are working in perfect harmony and this is also a textbook example. Beautiful coordination. We see beautiful coordination in Paul Morphy's pieces. So after knight takes on h8, this is checkmate and black is getting checkmated. What a beautiful and incredible checkmate by Paul Morphy. Another aesthetically beautiful checkmate by Paul Morphy and Le Carpentier got checkmated at move 13. But of course, Morphy's opponent was a terrible chess amateur and Morphy was an amazing talent. We see beautiful coordination in Morphy's pieces. Morphy's pieces are just dancing on the chessboard. And let's check out the third game, the third beautiful chess game of Morphy. And this is yet another aesthetic masterpiece by Paul Morphy, another beautiful chess game. And in this chess game, once again, Paul Morphy surrendered his rook, a rook handicap chess game by Morphy, against his father, Alonzo Morphy. Yes, he is actually playing against his father, and if you look carefully to the portrait of Alonzo Morphy, you can see the resemblance, especially the eyes. It is interesting, they look like each other. To be honest with you, I have never seen the actual, the real portrait of Alonzo Morphy, Paul Morphy's father. And this is also something interesting for me as well. He really does look like Paul Morphy. So this is the objective and the realistic portrait of Alonzo Morphy at the top left. And this is a chess game, also from New Orleans, from 1850. Let's check out how this chess game went on between Alonzo Morphy and Paul Morphy, his son. Well, Paul Morphy was just a kid at this time and he surrendered his queen's rook against his father who was much older than Paul Morphy and Morphy starts the game with playing e4, e5, developing, bishop to c4, knight to f6, knight to g5, going for the throat, d5, defending, e takes on d5, knight takes on d5 and just like in the first game, if you see the first game of Morphy in this video, Morphy goes for the knight sacrifice, attacking the king, attacking on f7, forking the queen and the rook, what else, capturing the knight, just like in the first game. This is a very similar chess game with the first chess game in this video. But in the first game Morphy's opponent was an unknown player, this time he is playing with his father, checking the king, moving the king and developing the knight. The pressure is on d5. Knight to d4. In the first game we see knight to e7, defending. But we know why this move is not working. Paul Morphy captured the knight. Check. King to d6 and queen to f7. Can you see the threat? Alonzo Morphy did. He played bishop to e6. If a6 in this position some random move, then knight to e4. Check. Mate. Black is getting checkmated and there is no defense. So Morphy is basically threatening checkmate, knight to e4, Alonzo Morphy is defending and he is disconnecting the queen and the bishop. So if checking the king, black can take the bishop because of the bishop on e6, this is disconnecting, 
Morphy captured the bishop and capturing back. What else? And knight to e4. Check. King to d5. Also defending the knight, but then attacking the king. Sucking the king to the south of the chessboard. Queen to d4. And checking the king. Moving. Checking. King to c2. Pushing the pawn. Check. King takes on c1. And in this position, Paul Morphy checkmated his brother. With the most aesthetic way possible, another aesthetic checkmate by Paul Morphy. Well, Paul Morphy cancelled. And we see this incredible checkmate. Checkmate. Black is getting checkmated. What a beautiful checkmate by Paul Morphy. And at this moment of the game, Alonzo Morphy had complicated feelings. Both he was proud, but at the same time, this hurt very badly. He was proud. Because his son was a brilliant young kid. But on the other hand, this was a humiliating checkmate. At move 80, so he was sad at the same time. He was proud and sad. What a beautiful checkmate by Paul Morphy. This is the final. And this is the final chess game. I think 3 chess games is enough. Beautiful checkmate by Paul Morphy. Which took our breaths away. A jaw dropping attack by Paul Morphy. He never gave his opponent the chance to castle and develop. Very quick and lightning attack by Paul Morphy as always. And thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.